Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. So now we will move to the dislocation, um, dissociation, that is uh, partial dislocation, especially in FCC crystal. Why just in FCC crystal? Because in other crystal forms, these partial dislocations are not that stable. It is not that it is not uh, able to form or something like that. In FCC crystals, it forms, it remains stable. So please understand. So most of the textbook talks about uh, FCC partial dislocations. It is not that it is not forming in VCC in other crystal forms. They may not be stable. In FCC crystals, slip occurs on 111 planes and in 110 directions. Consider the specific case of the slip system 111 bar 110 direction. So, this is the schematic of the 111 plane and this is the direction 110 direction. And what is shown here is <coughs> this. Uh, Uh, Burgess vector here and we will come to that little later. The Burgess vector corresponding to the displacement of one atom diameter is A by 2 bar 1 1 0. So, this is A by 2. There is a typo here. This is A by 6 it is written. So, it should be A by 2 bar 1 1 0. There is a correction. A dislocation with this Burgess vector can dissociate into two partial dislocation. So, A by 2 bar 1 1 0 can dissociate into A by 6 2 bar 1 1 uh, plus A by 6 bar 1 2 bar 1. So, there should be a plus sign here that is also a typo. Please. Uh, let us correct it. Stresses around an edge dislocation either attract or repel another parallel dislocation having the same budget vector depending upon how the two are positioned related to other. Right. This also we will see. There are some, um, you may have consideration on energy, but the orientation also will matter uh, sometimes. We will see that. Why? So, we can check this reaction um, uh, vectorially, correct, by noting that B1 has the coordinates like this, uh, does equal B2 the coordinates and, uh, and B3. And that is what is shown here, the dissociation. And th whether this dissociation can happen or not, is purely decided by the uh, Frank's rule. This is a Frank's rule. We just discussed about uh, the Frank rule in uh, a few minutes back. I was mentioning this, uh, this idea. So, you, we can just simply verify this, whether, whether this is indeed uh, true. You can just substitute this uh, um, coordinates into this uh, formula and then see whether uh, really the case. If this is not the, if, if it is not following this and this reaction will not happen. So, this is a, another uh, a nice schematic which shows that uh, yeah, how the unit dislocation dissociate into uh, partial dislocation. The purpose of uh, me bringing this schematic to you is it gives a very good visual appeal how the partial dislocations are kept in the lattice in a deform i mean the dislocated lattice usually uh, you know uh, people just uh, show the uh, budget vector dissociation reaction and then be done with it and very rarely we come across this kind of uh, a pictorial representation which is in my opinion very important to get the grasp of what partial dislocation means so, here 
it extra off plane and then you know that this is a unit dislocation but the unit dislocation which is a how it splits into two but still it is uh, how the lattice will look like a distorted lattice will look like okay so that is very important to note so because of uh, you know a small um, movement in, in in our displacement in the lattice position how it get distorted locally and then how this is influencing the rest of the rest of the atoms neighbors okay so that is very important and that decides the you know the the fault zone okay this is just a side view so the, this gives a very nice idea so the unit dislocation decompose into two partial dislocations so what is what is that a by 2 a by 2 okay but then these two dislocations how it influences the interatomic uh, distance in a finite area so that area is called central fault zone okay okay we will see that in another minute a fault uh, region uh, stacking fault and so on so this is uh, very useful for that kind of discussion okay so the the full dislocation is represented like this a half dislocation for our convenience we can put it like this uh, l shape and uh, and this is another reverse l shape the burger vector also is, is half half so this is the same um, way of representing this but this is much more elaborate uh, way of representing this and this hatched region gives a uh, area of fault region right fault region so this is uh, partial dislocation of course this also uh, happens because uh, only after verifying the we can the frank rule can be verified and then uh, that will predict that whether this kind of reaction is feasible or not so uh, coming close to that kind of an idea uh, there is uh, another important uh, aspect of these dislocations called stacking faults so if a single a by 6112 partial dis dislocation passes through an fcc crystal it leaves behind a region in which a sequence of stacking of the close packed 111 planes does not correspond to the normal fcc lattice so this is exactly as shown here right suppose if you just uh, assume that this is a partial dislocation of a by 6 uh, um, we are we are not showing that but this kind of a disturbance it will create so it will not follow a normal abc abc sequence in an fcc unit cell so this is a fcc unit cell you have a layer and then you have a b layer and then you have a c layer so you have three layers a b c a b c this is an hexagonal close pack unit cell which uh, which has the packing of a layer b layer a layer b layer and so on so in a um, yeah, one 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 plane uh, view is uh, normally shown like this so a layer and then you have inverted triangle void is b layer again uh, a normal triangle void is uh, c layer so this is a stacking view and um, so what how this uh, what is written here suppose if you have this kind of a partial try to move from here to here so this is what it is this is the same partial a by 6 partial dislocation moves a plane c so this wide to this wide so what is this c wide c wide is a, a equilateral regular triangle wide and from that too it tried to move to that inverted triangle wide position I and mean, I am just giving the description of the wide just to indicate the position of the atom so if it tries to move from this position to this position then also it creates a 
uh, packing sequence change. That is, it creates a region where the packing sequence is HCP rather than FCC. So, this is so another problem. So, if you look at uh, the stacking order near a stacking fault in FCC crystal is compared with the stacking in FCC and HCP lattices. And in and near a twin boundary in FCC crystal. So this is the AB AB sequence in HCP unit cell or HCP lattice. This is ABC ABC in FCC lattice. Suppose if there is a fault, suppose what we have just moved in the previous slide, the C is moved, then it creates that layer. So this is uh, ABC. And then it becomes AC. So this is a region of a stacking fault. The similar way, so it becomes AC, 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 right? So here, similar, similarly, it can also form a twin if if it moves like this, ABC, and then AC. So here it becomes twin. We will see. When we look at the mechanics of things also, we will refer this. The atom displacement is very, very small, but homogeneous. You have to remember that. How the twin, if you can see that, you know, the, the atom displacement are fraction of interatomic uh, spacing. But it has to happen in a homogeneous manner for large uh, number of atoms. It has to cooperate and form this boundary. We will see that when we discuss the twinning, but here it is considered, here we are concentrating on the stacking fault. The stacking sequence near a stacking fault in an FCC crystal is similar to the packing sequence in HCP lattice. That's known. Because this is not the equilibrium structure of FCC, the stacking fault raises energy. So this we already know. See, uh, here we, we are we are still talking about a dislocation only, but here it changes the sequence of the stacking. It becomes a fault. Obviously, that will uh, raises the energy of the system, and the increase of energy depends directly on the area of the fault. So, since this is uh, as as I just showed you in the uh, previous slides, it takes quite a bit of a region uh, uh, fault. A faulty region. No, it pushes all the atom interatomic spacing in the nearby region to some extent. It completely disturbs. So it is considered like a region. So the energy is also measured per area. Okay, the dislocation energy is measured by unit length. But stacking fault it happens over a region or area. So the here energy per meter square area. Right, so that is the only difference between considering uh, individual dislocation and versus a stacking fault. Uh, the stacking fault energy gamma stacking fault is the energy per area of the fault and can be regarded as a surface tension pulling the partial dislocations together. Yeah, so this is another uh, nice way of connecting things. So, uh, now that we are familiar with what kind of a stress field around the edge dislocations and how it's going to affect, so we can now, uh, can easily recognize, so this, this is two dis edge dislocation of the same sign. So, mutual repulsive force uh, from the each stress field and this is an attraction caused by the stacking fault. Suppose if you have the, this kind of a configuration. Two partial dislocation A by 6, 1, 1, 2 separated by a stacking fault. So, this is a similar figure what I just showed uh, before, but it is much closer look uh, compared to the, the other one. So, two partial dislocations come from both sides, and uh, you can see that this movement uh, from inverted triangle wide position to the triangle wide position. So, in between region will be. Uh, not a perfect FCC, it will be a, a region of a faulty region. So, this is this region is called uh, stacking fault. 
region and the energy associated with this region is called stacking fault energy. The equilibrium spacing between the two partial dislocations correspond to the separation at which the mutual repulsion and attraction balance. So this is something about how these uh, stacking faults are stable. So, so you know that uh, you know uh, if the repulsive and attractive forces are in balance, then they are trying to be some stability. So that is all it means. Okay. Um, now we will slowly move uh, get into the dislocation motion right see we so far we have seen the type of dislocations and uh, dislocation energy dislocation strain fields and uh, the strain uh, detailed description of strain fields and its consequences on the second phase particles or second foreign atom or solid solution or even with the other dislocations how it is going to react and now we will slowly get into the a dislocation mechanics and then um, the first step is we should uh, describe what is the a dislocation motion happens how how does a dislocation motion takes place so here is a, a nice um, example here this is a lattice 2d lattice with the edge dislocation and the shear stress is applied on this both direction here and here and what you are seeing here is uh, uh, have a close look at this and the atoms are coming are since because of the shear stress the atoms are trying to move away from this equilibrium position which is uh, given by the dotted circle around each of the atoms and uh, and this is a slip, slip plane and we have marked uh, the atom one two three four in yellow okay see we, we are now trying to give some um, <clears throat> some atomistic uh, accountability of uh, how this location moves okay please uh, remember that this is we are still talking about elastic uh, deformation right because the full stress field and uh, energy is described by elasticity theory only so far so suppose if you uh, look at the uh, atom one and its reaction because of this shear stress what it will do the shear stress will try to move away from its uh, position because of the shear stress is moving this direction right but at the same time the Atom number two and four will try to move opposite direction, getting to closer to its equilibrium position. That means there should be some energy balance. What is the balance here? The energy, elastic strain energy, which is stored in this atom, right? Or when when it try to uh, move that energy is balanced by this external stress and the same energy will be equal if the same elastic stored energy which is trying to move from this position okay is balanced by this same elastic stored energy to restore this 2 and 4 in its equilibrium position then then that this location will I mean this atom will try to move okay I mean this is with respect to just motion of atom 1 with respect to 2 and 4 because it uh, both in opposite direction that means the elastic stored energy responsible uh, for holding that atom 1 in that position and 2 and 4 in their position should be restored or balanced by the application of uh, shear stress so that is the idea i mean the otherwise the work to be done by the external uh, shear stress is to give this energy balance then the uh, atom will move from that position 
and if the external stress is good enough to move this to uh, the extreme uh, right, then it, this crystal will slip. So this is one way of looking at it. Okay, how the dislocation moves. The other important point uh, we have to remember in mind when the dislocation moves, uh, there are two things. Uh, the edge dislocation again screw dislocation that are uh, when the dislocation moves it moves uh, parallel to the the edge dislocation moves parallel to the motion of the dislocation i mean the the dislocation moves along with the dislocation line the direction of the dislocation line okay on the other hand it moves perpendicular to the dislocation line. So this is what it is. So this is a screw dislocation, right? And these are the good schematic uh, shows how the motion of the edge dislocation takes place in a lattice. So you see that uh, the extra half plane is getting shifted from a position A to position B to position beyond D in fact and it creates a unit uh, step of slip. So this is something uh, like similar to the how the caterpillar moves. So this schematic clearly uh, brings that analogy uh, how the caterpillar moves right it's again if you look at the the stress field also it will go like this if you remember some of the stress field it's a, it's a nice motion like that and uh, if you look at uh, the other aspect of uh, the motion the Suppose if the vacancies are involved in the dislocation motion, then the uh, the extra half plane will become shorter. How it becomes shorter? Suppose if the vacancies are getting attracted by this uh, compressive tensile force or the vacancy moves here, then the atoms will go here, then this will become shorter, right? The extra half plane will become shorter. So that uh, that is normally in this situation the compression strain from these both ends will aid this uh, this kind of a mechanism. That's what is shown here. So you should also remember that if this kind of vacancy motion is there, uh, the uh, little bit high temperature we later we will see a, a line of a complete string of vacancies has to form in the dislocation line for the entire half plane to move up. Right? So a huge uh, a dislocation uh, vacancies have to migrate to move the extra half plane up. That is another way of uh, looking at the uh, climb motion. Okay, this uh, schematic, uh, very interesting schematic shows and it kind of, you know, it gives uh, an idea what really happens if the dislocation, edge dislocation moves in a lattice and what is the consequence? What is the consequence here? The edge dis dislocation comes and the A letter is there here and it cuts through that and uh, on the glide plane and it makes a shift. So the shift the measurement will be equivalent to one Burgers vector, right? So what does it mean is the relative lattice displacement produced by the glide motion of the dislocation leaves a new neighbors of each environment. You may restore the uh, lattice uh, configuration, but each atom will have its new neighbors. That's my idea. Okay, another very important uh, slide uh, this is, we will spend uh, some time. Suppose now uh, that in gliding along its slip plane, an edge dislocation meets, a, meets obstacle to its passage, such as a pair of 
precipitate particles which are not as easily sheared as, as is the matrix material. B and C. There are two uh, hard particles which is not shearable. It is an obstacle for the dislocation motion. So this is a dislocation line which uh, encounters uh, these two particles and uh, it tries to bow. You know, the bowing takes place. And what else is happening? So if you look at this, uh, okay, the geometrical model for the calculation of dislocation line tension. So this line tension word is not new to us. We have already seen it. Right? Line energy, we, we correlated this surface energy to, you know, uh, surface tension to surface energy and line energy to line tension. We have already discussed, right? So the dislocation line tension brought about when the dis dislocation encounters obstacle B and C and start to bulge through the, uh, between them. The applied shear stress tau gives a normal force. What is normal force? Tau B L. L is the distance between the two obstacles B and C and tau B you know this is a force, right? Uh, we are very familiar with the tau B um, on the line segment bowing it out between the pin points. This force is balanced by the parallel component of the dislocation line tension. What is the parallel component of the dislocation line tension? So this is a T. Okay, parallel component is uh, T sin theta. Okay, so this is T. This is T sin theta. So we have two, so it is two T sin theta. So tau B L is equal to 2 T sin theta. Simple force balance, right? So where L is the distance between B and C and uh, the replacement of T in the equation by its equivalent uh, from its uh, equation similar terms, what we have already seen, tau is equal to 2 G B by L sin theta. This is the uh, uh, shear stress that uh, the dislocation um, encounters uh, when it meets the two obstacles and non shearable particles. Okay. So, this is very important uh, idea. Uh, as I said, this expression will be, uh, will be very useful when we go to the strengthening mechanism aspects. So it may be seen from this equation that increased stress is required to cause increased bowing of the line segment until the segment is semicircular. At this stage, theta is equal to 90 and the stress tau assumes its maximum value. Tau max is equal to 2 GB by L. Yeah. So this is obvious. The theta 90, you can just plug in this value and you can see it like this. According to this equation, dislocation which does not meet any obstacle sin theta is equal to zero should be capable of moving at a vanishingly small stress. If it does meet obstacles, a higher stress is necessary, the smaller the value of L. So this is also a very important statement. So how uh, the obstacle size and the distance between them influences the, the stress required for the dislocation to bow or counter this obstacle. It, it, it clearly explains. Okay, finally I would like to show uh, one small images uh, about uh, dislocation motion. So this is a screw dislocation which is supposed to move here in the straight, in the straight line, but then it is uh, going into other, some other plane, it cross lips, right? It need not, um, screw dislocation always uh, glide, I mean, it, it need not glide in a same plane, but it will go to the uh, next plane by cross lip mechanism, okay? And this uh, edge dislocation, Mackenzie movement we have seen it will try to climb, okay, climb motion. So uh, 
similar i mean there is there are a lot of mechanisms uh, or i would say that uh, mechanics of dislocations are also useful to explain the the crystalline materials deformation behavior right? so we will see a uh, lot more examples of uh, dislocation motion and then i would say uh, mechanics um, in much more detail in the next class we will stop here and see you later thank you